Hi, and welcome to The Curling Show, the podcast that brings you interviews with the sport's top athletes and the people who shape the game. Brought to you by Local 59 and their line of steel furniture. See it at local59.com. I'm Dean Gemmel, and in this edition, we spoke with Bob Ursel during the Strauss Crown of Curling in Kamloops, British Columbia. So I just saw you lost in an extra end the first game here. Oh, I just said that. I think probably the nicest shot I've ever seen made was just made against us in 10. Oh, really? Yeah. Against Al Moore, what did he do? Al Moore made a sank, hit five of our rocks out of the house to get us two. Wow. We were laying five. Uh-huh. He needed two to win. And he had a biter and a 12-foot. Uh-huh. And he threw, well, he just threw it from his, like he fell out of the hack and pushed it as hard as he could. And, uh... He hit it perfect and got all five of our rocks out of the house and stuck. He made a quintuple and stuck. I don't think I've ever seen a quintuple alive. I've never actually. seen it before either. No. And I, I've never seen it before either. It was, it was pretty cool. Pretty cool. Not so much. Yeah. Well, you guys won this event last year, right? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of tour teams out in Alberta at the Denmark Energy Services Spiel. So this sort of looks like a best of BC field a little bit. Do you think it's a good tune-up to see who's who's gelling this year and who isn't? Uh, it's a pretty strong field here, Dean. No, there's actually most of the BC teams are here, except with the exception of Pat Ryan. He's off in Switzerland. Other than that, I, I think they're all here. And uh, yep, but there's also a good field of teams from Manitoba and Alberta here as well. Right. No, I'm not saying it was a weak field. It's just uh, it's sort of a split week, I think. And most of the BC teams seem to be in Kamloops. So. Yeah. Well, it's a good BC field, Dean. I mean, Kamloops always puts on a good event, and uh, you know it's good fun and it's good draw times and playing half of it in the arena this year, which will be interesting. Oh, really? Were you in the arena this morning? Or? No, we we're in the club. Which teams in tour have surprised you this year? Teams on tour have surprised. Yeah, you I mean you guys? You guys did well in Vernon. You won there. Did you play anybody that surprised you? Thought you're a little underrated. Um, I don't think so. You know, I, I we've only played in the one spiel so far this year, and uh, you know, I mean, Sean Geal from from BC is having a good year. And I've noticed. Right. You know, he played in three and qualified in all three. Um, we play him next game actually. Uh huh. But uh, you know, other than that, it's it's the same old faces and the. You know, showing up and qualifying, and you know, you mentioned Pat Ryan out in Switzerland. You, you know, you played for a lot of great skips like Pat and Bert, and even your dad, I guess, at some point. You know, you, you left Pat's team, I guess, to go back to skipping. What makes a guy like you want to throw last rock? Well, I just, uh, you know, I missed it. I missed uh, throwing the brick. Um, you know, I enjoyed my year with Pat, but uh, I wanted to slow down a little bit, and not quite play as much, and and uh, get back into skipping. I'd skipped most of my life. I, I stepped down to play third for Burt um, when I moved to Kelowna, but uh, it was it was time to move on. You talk about moving to Kelowna. Do you think your curling career would have unfolded differently if you'd stayed in Manitoba? Think you'd be playing more or less? Oh, God, who knows? Um, you know, it's, the Manitoba is so thick with curlers. Um, you know, I think it probably would have unfolded similar. You know, for me, I got... You know, families first, and then, and then work, and curling kind of comes third. I don't think that would have changed. So I I don't have, uh, you know, the time or uh, the desire to play in, you know, 10 spiels in a year like a lot of the a lot of the Manitoba teams are doing now. Right. Teams anyways. And uh, so for me, you know, I'd have to find somebody that's willing to look at, you know, four or five spiels, and that's kind of my pace with uh, with family and work. Do you know if Pat's team's going to play in the BC Playdowns this year? Or? I'm not sure, Dean. What I've heard is Pat's is moved to Alberta. Right. And he's not going to play in the Playdowns. But, you know, that being said, I wouldn't be surprised if he does. You know, you won a World Junior title, 85. I remember watching that final game in what seemed like the most dimly lit curling club ever in Perth. I remember it just seemed really dark on TV. What do you remember from that whole experience? Oh, it was a great experience. I mean, it's a, it's a once-in-a-lifetime event. Um, you know, not many people go back to that more than once in juniors, and it was uh, it was fantastic. And to and to go there and win it, it's uh, it's uh, led to a lot of opportunities, you know, for me um, in curling, and uh, it was uh, it was great. I'm still maintain a good friendship with the, with the guys I played with back then. And yeah, what happened to most of those guys? They don't play much anymore. They're your brother included, or my brother? He you know pretty much quit the game after that. He played. He dabbled a little bit. Uh, in it, but uh, he put all his energy into education and work, uh-huh. family. Uh, Brent, 
played competitively in Manitoba for a few years after that, and then kind of uh, him as well got into education and and uh, now family and is not playing as much. And Gerald, well, he's gone on to he moved to Australia and went on to go to the Worlds. I don't know how many times. Oh, with Hugh Milliken, did you play with him? Yeah. Oh, really? He played with. I didn't realize that. Played for Australia for I don't know how many Worlds he went to, but he went to a few of them. Huh, I, I didn't know he was part of that team. Yeah, represented uh, Australia. You know, you talk about a, a more limited schedule than some teams, but you know, last year your team lost the BC final. So, what sort of goals do you have for this year, even with, with a limited schedule and everything else? We got the same goals as we had last year. I mean, we want to go to the Briar and give the Briar a crack. I mean, last year our main goal probably was to qualify for the Olympic trials, which didn't happen, and then uh, and go to the Briar. And uh, we we hold the same goal this year: get to the Briar. You know, and it's, it's possible out here in BC. You don't have to play in every weekend. To, to uh, give yourself a shot. I think you just got to dedicate some serious practice time and uh, and play well on the weekend that uh, the playdowns are going on. Right. Did you learn to curl in Quebec, or did you start when you moved to Winnipeg? I started in Quebec. The Point Claire? A two-sheet curling club. Oh, yeah? In uh, St. Anne de Bellevue. St. Anne de Bellevue. I played there. Yeah, and uh, it was wild. It was curled 12 and a half feet, I think. Yeah. So that's that's my first few years we're out of St. Anne de Bellevue. Okay, last segment. I wrap up the interviews now, a thing I call the run-back segment. I give you a topic, and you give me a, your thoughts in two to three words. So here we go. The new old CCA TV deal. Thank God TSN's doing it. Win a slam or win the briar? Briar. Most underrated team on tour? <laughs> Goose shoe. Teflon or steel? Steel. Mixed curling? Don't have time. The Gold Labatt Tankard or the Rehab McDonald Briar Trophy? Old McDonald. Old McDonald. All right, thanks for your time, Bob. Hope you get back on the winning side this weekend, and uh, maybe we'll have a chance to talk again later. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, eh? Take care. Bye-bye. Take care. That's Bob Ursel on The Curling Show, brought to you by Local 59. Find their desks, tables, and T-shirts on the web at local59.com. Thanks for listening, and enjoy some pudding. Live